we'll take uh, that end. So we'll play. We'll play defense. Beautiful. All right. Same. I'm here with Rachel. Rachel, how are you feeling about the toss? Pretty good. Um, so there is quite a strong wind, um, mainly going down this direction and also across here. So it's quite advantageous to start up this end, um, just because you are going downwind. It's a little bit easier than trying to work the disc up upwind. That's some great insight. How are you feeling about the game? Pretty good. Day two. A um, little bit stiff and sore, but still feeling pretty good and ready to go. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck today. Thank we'll see you out there. See ya. Um, run me through the decision there. Well, I think it's the, f uh, it's the first time that I've lost the toss and they've decided on end, so I didn't get to have my go-to. But um, we've got a strong D-line, so excited to get out there and try to get an early break. We watched uh, yesterday a real tough game against Phoenix. Uh, what was the, the girls' feeling after that, that loss in Universe Point there? Um, I think... Despite the loss, people were pretty happy with how we performed and especially having the comeback. So um, we know we've got a bit more in the tank and hopefully we can carry on the momentum from the excitement of that game through to today. Well, it was wonderful to watch. Good luck for the game and hopefully you can turn in another good performance like that one. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll throw back now to Simon Talbot and Laura Hutton, your commentary team for this game. Thank you, Daniel. Simon Talbot here with Laura Hutton bringing you the first game of day two from the Australian Ultimate Championships. And who have we got, Laura? That's right. We have Spicy Chili from Melbourne and we have Sugar Magnolias hailing from Newcastle today. Uh, tight matchup? Yeah, it should be a tight matchup. So uh, Spicy Chili yesterday went one win, two losses. Sugar Magnolias, as Leanne spoke about, that unfortunate sudden death loss to Phoenix, which meant they're zero and three at the moment, still chasing their first win. They are that result easily the closest of the day, uh, being going down to Manly and Blaze earlier in the day. Uh, spicy Chili also going down to Factory and Manly, but managing to get up over Heads of State Phoenix. Yeah, I think this is going to be a game of athleticism versus skill. I think Spicy Chili are quite a young team. They're definitely fast and fit, but Sugar Magnolias definitely have the experience and the disc skills. So the the wind will be a bit of a test for both teams today, but I think Sugar Magnolias might have the advantage there to see how Spicy Chili can get a start on the game. So we're going to take a closer look at the squads now. And first we'll look at Spicy Chili. Spicy Chili uh, looking today. Uh, highlights there. Number one, Rachel Meehatch. We'll be seeing her handle the disc a lot. Along with number 12, Evie Miller. Uh, we have number 58, Panya Preston, an up-and-comer, very versatile and then also looking for number eight, Kat Buxer, only 16 years old. 16, wow. Yep, and she's great on the D-line. Good intensive pressure, looking for lots of run-through defence. Yep. Also worth highlighting number 19, Louis Batista, uh, playing assistant coach this year. She's uh, been in the game uh, close, to, close to 10 or 15 years now, so uh, good experience for this young team to have an older head like that uh, on the line with them. Next, we're going to look at the Sugar Magnolias list from Newcastle. And again, a, a smaller squad, as, as we've come to expect from Newcastle teams, but uh, plenty of grit and determination. Their captain, uh, we met this with there, Leanne King, uh, veteran of the game, one of the best, most consistent throwers we've got out there on the field. Also worth highlighting, uh, Daisy Ewan, number 12, um, Anna Stoddart as well, number 81, one of the younger players. Likes to really stand and deliver with her throws. Plenty of power behind them. Definitely searching for the end zone, looking for her fast receivers. That is true. And don't discount number 11, Danielle Adams. Great on the D-line, good intense pressure, and also able to turn over and then work on the offence line as well. Yeah. It's going to be... I think this game will start very intense, and we'll, I think we'll try back and forth for a couple. Uh, so I think whoever will get the first defensive break of the game will definitely have the mental advantage here. Yep. Uh, Sugar Magnolias talked last night and this morning about wanting to start stronger, uh, being stronger off the line, having, bringing energy and intensity from the very first point. And, of course, these teams played three games yesterday, three up to 100-minute long games. I don't think every game quite lasted that long, so probably about an hour and a half. We're going to throw it down back to Daniel Clinton now, who's with Steve Baker, one of the game advisors. Morning, Steve. Morning, mate. Now, can you explain, uh, we hear the whistles on the, the game audio. What are the whistles? Uh, well, there's whistles between points, so they're just reminders for the players of 
time passing by. There's time limits for players to um, be ready and to put the pull into play. Uh, so there's reminders at 45 seconds, 60 seconds for the offence to be ready and then 75 for the defence to pull. During play there's whistles for timeouts and things like that, again reminding players. There's no penalties for going over time but we're just reminding them, hey, it's time to get moving. Yeah, great. Thank you for your time Steve Cheers. and uh, good luck for the game. Thank you. Steve Baker, a very experienced game advisor and a wealth of knowledge for the players as well. So you might see him and Holly Halford-Smith, our other game advisor, sometimes uh, into the field with their green shirts on. They're not to make rulings, Laura. That is true. They can offer their opinion if they are asked for it. They can provide knowledge about the rules and what should happen in these situations. Uh, but it is up to the players to make the final determination. Yeah, the players are responsible for upholding and enforcing the rules of the game. As we see there, Sugar Magnolia's having the final chat. A couple of them still rugged up. It's a bit chilly here this morning. It is a little bit chillier than yesterday. Uh, the wind's still blowing. Uh, that left to right wind across the screen. Uh, but a little bit more consistent than yesterday, maybe. Of course, we're hoping to expect some warmer temperatures later today. But... Yeah, the, the wind will be enough to be enough to make it challenging for their throwers. Yes, uh, especially looking at Spicy Chili. They are a development team. They are trying to build foundations for this club going into the future. So there are some uh, experienced hands, some Australian representatives, but also some newer players who have come up mostly through University Ultimate. Yeah, and also through the Victorian junior representative teams, the under-18s and the under-22s. So we see coach Jasper Pendlin there. He's coached them for a couple of years now since their inception of the women's team. Of course, Chile were previously a long-standing men's club out of Melbourne, being on the scene for about 21 years now. And recently adding a women's offering. Yes, uh, they made their first run in 2019, I believe, uh, heading to Division One Nationals there. So some of the team do have experience at this level, but unfortunately with 2020 season not going ahead, um, they only have that one year of experience as a team. As we hear the whistles to indicate readiness for the players, Tilly Smith there for Sugar Mags to send the first pull up for the day. Puts a bit of roll on it just to get a bit of extra distance. Spice and Chile will start their offence. About 35 from goal. Batista. Wants a safe, consistent option. A lot of players cutting towards her. Finds Preston. Matheson. Back to Preston. Sugar Max are playing a number of players around the disc. Van. Miller. Yeah, trying to force a lot of lateral movement. Leisha Ong having to reach for that one. Quickly to Van. Got a couple of options up the line. Finds Preston. And Preston quickly looks for Buxer, but can't reel it in. Just uh, very quick, had to release that very quickly. Probably wasn't quite on balance enough. So Sugar Magnolias get their first go of the disc. And Smith. There's a clear option there from Lang. And then tries to go up the line, but puts a bit too much on it. So Batista will restart, goes straight away, looking for the tall Alicia Ong. Reigns it in nicely. That's very nice. Uh, Sugar Magnolia is coming <laughs> down there in a zone defense. Mm. So that is where the players do not mark another player. They mark a space or a position. Yep. Uh, it is generally used to keep a lot of defenders around the disc and prevent uh, short passes, yep. uh, kind of forcing longer throws over the top of those players around the disc, which in a wind like this uh, can force more errors. Yeah, it's a very risky shot to try and throw the big long ones over the top. This early in the game, when everyone's still not quite warmed up, they've done their stretches, done their rolling on the sideline. So, but yeah, it does, definitely takes a couple of points just to get into the rhythm of the game. So, yeah. teams like to just keep things safe and consistent early on. And coming down in a zone defense like that on the first point can also be a strategy to try and rattle them mentally, uh, not expecting them to throw that kind of zone defense very early on. You see, there is a stiff old breeze, but it's starting to get a bit swirly already. So you hear the second whistle there, indicating that offense needs to be ready. Rachel Mehatch sends a pull up. Bit too much angle on that one, so that's going to drop short. Sugar Max will only have half the field to make it. 
They're moving down the side, so this first pass will look to try and go lateral, trying to hit King. That was Jennifer Hall. Plenty of space on the high side, so she sends it out to the advantage of Adams, who can't rein it in. Right idea, though, opening up that space on the high side yep. of the field. Yep, uh, that really tight side stack, leaving Adams in a lot of space to work in. Shelly with a vertical formation. Knee hatch. Long over the top, looking for Kite Beatty. Another turnover there, so Sugar Magnolias will get another chance with the disc. Yeah. Players, both teams having a couple of minutes to try and find their touch, and Sugar Magnolia's going for a split formation here. Three on the high side, two on the short side, trying to just isolate some one-on-one -on -one battles. And there's been a pick called in the stack, but so that'll go back to Leanne King. But it'll be probably quite a high stall count by now, about six or seven, so she won't have long to get rid of this one. We'll just have to pick the first option. Yes. Uh, this U stack, uh, Newcastle staple, uh, the split stack, um, generating a lot of space in the middle. As we can see them going to reset, and King with the disc at a late stall count will be looking for an easy early option. Probably trying to reset just to the left of the screen there, I think. She'll... Well, no, looks straight forward and backs herself to go straight to Morris Jackson. And King now belts it down the line, looking for Nicole Ward. Unab so. Unable to make the connection there. Uh, Chile now walking up to the disc. Chile with a vertical stack in the middle of the field, a single stack there. Yeah, now generate options from the back of that formation and to the side. Really taking advantage of their speed, and Jan overcooks that throw, puts it straight into the lap of Smith. Drops it back to Leanne King, but winds up the big long backhand looking for her receiver. Leaves her feet, but it's just not enough. Uh, too much on the outside of that one. Great bid there, trying, <laughs> trying to get that one in. Bit of work to be done, that's... Cut Beatty to me hatch. Winds up the back end. <laughs> Doesn't like it, so heads wide. Looking again for Elizabeth Chen. They're always going to try and work it to this close sideline while Sugar Magnolia's trying to uh, force their throws to the high side. King. A few options moving away from her. Puts it out into space. I think that was Ferguson there who had to go leave her feet again. There has been a call here. I'm not sure what they're discussing. I think they were discussing whether the disc was up or down. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The Sugar Mags play getting a hand to it, but not before it touched the grass. Match to Miller. Too low. And Sugar Magnolias with a hot opportunity here, well within their red zone. Yep. Uh, uh, close, right. close to this near side. Great cut there, great movement, and great goal. Lovely, and that is number 11, Danielle Adams, with that goal. Definitely had the height advantage there. And, and the position advantage as well, I think, Simon. Yep, so she drew a defender in closer to the disc and headed away, and it needed to be a precise throw, but with the Ant King, you never need to worry about that too much. Yeah, those experienced hands have thrown many an assist in their days. See here, the movement came from the back, drew a defender in, and then straight away to the back corner. Haley Tan there, the chilly player, made a goal of it. She did, uh, and the Sugar Magnolias with the first point on the board. Uh, this will mm. really feed their goals of coming out with energy and intensity uh, as they then pull upwind uh, to Chile, who will be moving downwind. Yeah. So one all the score. And Tilly Smith and all of that. <laughs> had a uh, stray, a stray <laughs> spectator onto the field. The perils of playing in a uh, public open space. <laughs> As they reset, the pull coming up. Great pull. That's great pull. That's going to pin them right back. Batista. Santos to Preston. Another zone look. Bichuin. Flores. 
wants to look upfield, but I don't think really has lateral options available at the moment. She's taking, using the full stalk out. That's, oh, that would have been <laughs> close to 10. It's one wide to Patista. That's a terrific throw, but Patista, a bit mindful of the sideline. I think it's fingertips to it. Smith picks it up, bombs the forehand up the line, but looking for Sarah Lang, but has put a bit too much on it and tipped it over. Yes, and Sugar Magnolia zone there, very effective. You could see how many players they had around the disc, cutting off both upfield and then also having people to take out those lateral options, forcing that stall count very high. Yeah. You see Emma Stoddard just in front of the disc there, just covering that space, which means that She'll have left one player free and they immediately move it to the high side of the field to take advantage of that. Bit to a lateral again to Batista who takes that one cleanly. Tries to rush that one. I don't know if Morris Jackson got a hand to it, but she definitely put enough pressure on it to force it down. There was a lot of defensive pressure there from the Sugar Magnolias. High stall counts. Ewan gets moving to Stoddard. Start up, bombs it up the sideline, looking for Morris Jackson, but there was a pick call, I think. I've saw, seen the hand signals, but... Goals are being signalled by the game advisors on the line yeah, there. Okay, so the call got withdrawn. It did. Might not have affected the throw there. Uh, we have Daniel here on the sidelines. Daniel, what are you seeing? Just noticing a lot of intensity from the Sugar Magnolias. They've come out firing, ready to go, and now they're up in this match, and... Chile, well, they're going to have to lift and, and match this intensity from the Sugar Magnolias. Yep, yeah. those experienced players in the wind, really key here. Uh, not afraid to put longer throws even going upwind. As both teams back on the line are receiving words of advice from uh, the Chile from their coach Jasper uh, and the Sugar Mags from King there. So Sugar Magnolias with the first defensive break of the game going up when which is can be very advantageous to have that early ascendancy in a game like this we're expecting it to be pretty back and forth but having a one goal advantage can have a real mental edge at times it can that pull going up from Hoare Miller for Chile plenty of space in this near side but being cut off by the Sugar Mags van. Bullet through the middle to Mehatch. To Dan. Plenty of time and space to work in, so sizes us for options. Um. To Miller. Finds Mehatch again. Mehatch finding space in the middle. Buxer right on the doorstep now. Dishes it up easily to. Elizabeth Chen. So Spicy Chili respond with an upwind goal of their own. Yes, uh, exciting ultimate here. Uh, upwind points, usually a bit harder to fight for. Chili showing there that bullet through the middle to Mehaj, really breaking open that zone. Yeah. And they just had a lot of forward momentum from there. Yeah, it's also, it's difficult throws to sort of pick the gap between two or three, sometimes four players at once, but Christina Van, we know, very accomplished at doing that, and Rachel Mehatch just getting herself in exactly the right positions each time. Yes, those connections really strong from a long season of working together, of training, of drilling, mm. uh, and really focusing on those connections. So we see Spicy Chili will come down at a match formation. Well, they'll just make some one-on-one -on -one battles and we'll probably see we'll probably see Sugar Magnolias come out. Maybe they'll try that U-stack formation? They might. Uh, it, usually they use it going downwind yeah, okay. uh, as it relies on a few longer passes. Um, but it is possible that uh, with the strength of throwers they have, they might pull it out going upwind. Yeah, they've got two cutters on the high side. They've got one in the middle and a start out on their own. Heads deep, but... Tilly Smith can't get the long shot out, so goes lateral to Morris Jackson. We now find Stoddard. Go short up the line to Whitney Dolan, but Matheson may have got a finger on that, but it was enough to be pushed. 
Yes, and Sugar Magnolia is going for a person-to-person -person defense here. Uh, usual thing we would see on a turn from defense, offense to defense. Preston finds Bichuan, but puts it too high. And Sugar Mags will look for a quick restart to go up win. Ewan now unguarded for a second. Finds Smith. Assistant at the scene. Lefty got a very strong backhand and looking deep for it, but wants a reset, can't find one, but finds an option upfield. Morris Jackson tries to just lift it over the top back to Ewan, who is charging upfield, but like not enough power on it. And like we said earlier, those up, th the lofty throws going into the wind, very hard to control. Haley Tan just straight pointed to that one, said, get, let's get this out of here, get this <laughs> down the other end. But Stoddard also saw her pointing, was <laughs> able to clear that up. Smith. This time finds Morris Jackson cleanly. Back to Smith. A very strong left backhand, Smith. So we'll look to try and gain some territory here, and she does just that. We'll go for another pop over the top, but can't win this time. Cleaning that one up for the intercept. Chen. Bit to win. Looks like they're just going to go for a couple of short gainers here now, actually. This time, Bitwin looks it up, looking for Preston. Right underneath it, a couple of defenders on her tail, but she catches it unpressured. A few options upfield, but she'll look back now. Finds Tan. Tan sends it up again, but this time, Daisy Ewan saw that one coming. I think she recognised that Tan wants to just... I think she did, and providing that defensive pressure, um, it's, it's hard to concentrate on catching a disc while there is a defender on your tail. Yeah. We're trying to avoid contact. Ewan, great inside shot, finds Lang. Straight back to Ewan. Good high release shot to start out, but bobbled around a bit. Fairly wobbly old disc, that one. <laughs> It is, and Chile with a shot from within their third of the field. Haley Tan, they've isolated Simone Bitwin, with Flores also coming in from the back. She's got two options there, finds Flores. Takes her time. Not an ego brush, puts a big wide looping backhand up looking for Matheson, but... Just over her head, and those discs really hard to read when it comes over the back of your head. Um, as King will walk this one up to the front of the end zone line. The Sugar Magnolia is having to work it up the entire field. Yeah, continually just taking shots at the end zone really keeps the defence just on their heels, have pushed them back all the time. Looking to pump it to Anna Stoddard to provide a big gainer, but... Going up wind, that's a risky shot. Yeah, it's, if it doesn't come out right, it's not going to go far. Preston. Sends it long, looking for Matheson at the back and lands it right on her head. Could not have been a better throw. Beautiful throw there from Pena. Looking at the defensive pressure from both teams there, there were a lot of long shots going back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Chile definitely throwing for territory, I feel, uh, the closer they got to the Sugar Magnolia's end. Uh, and the Sugar Magnolia's just trying to get it out of that danger zone. Yeah, so Spicy Chile, what they... What they're not afraid to do is, yeah, take those long shots at the end zone and then just back their defensive efforts to get an early turnover and get it back. Really make it a game of territory. Sugar Magnolia is there. The more possessions they have in a point, the more impatient they seem to get. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the focuses will be translating that energy and intensity into kind of a calm mm. fury rather than uh, this kind of very frustrated energy that they've got at the moment. Yeah, what I, th what I think they could look to try and do is they've got strong throwers, they've got good fast receivers, but when they throw backwards for those resets, they're losing too many metres. The receivers could afford to sort of wait one or two more seconds for their throwers to get up, make it a lateral rather than losing yards. So. That is true. Rather than have to repeat the cycle more often. Smith. King, nice little dab back end to Adams. Thompson, straight in board to King. Great little sequence there. And King pumps it wide and long. 
actually sticking to a person-to-person -person defense there, knowing the Sugar Magnolias were going downwind yeah. uh, and backing their defenders to take out each of those players individually. Yeah. So what I think they'll try and do here is the the defenders might get in throws. will really try and cut off a, any forward passes and try and force them to throw laterally. Evie Miller. Gets it to Van. Van quickly moves it up the line to Lee. Lee pumps it locked and looking for Ong, but great look. Great sequence of passes there, <laughs> just outside of Ong's reach, as King will walk up to pick up this disc, looking at Sugar Magnolias in a central vertical stack. And Ong there, so you're going to force Sugar Mags to work to this side of the field, and I think that plays into King's favour. Probably pumps it across the field looking for Smith, and... Certainly a difficult throw, tricky to get right. It is, but would have opened up that side of the field had it come oh, off. For sure. So Millionaire has a shot about 15 from goal. Backwards to Batista. Goes forward to Van, but a pick's been called. In the stack there, I think it was in the middle. Of my I think it's going to remain with Van. I think so. I don't think that throw was affected. No. Play resets. Van lifts the backhand up looking for Ong Tucker, but I think she might have actually been looking for Dorothy Lee at the back there. King with a quick restart finds Hall. Pumps it down the sideline and finds Courtney Thompson. It was just over the top of Van there as she looked over her shoulder. She's got a cut of one out in the end zone. Doesn't look there. King resets to Hall. Looks to move it to the high side. Can't get a clean throw out, so go short to Thompson. Dishes up to King. She's got a shot straight down the line and goes for it. But Lee, all over that one. Yeah. She saw that coming a mile away and swats that away with authority. Read that very well. Uh, left her player to go and intercept the disc. Yep. As we can see in the replay here, that lovely long throw. Yes. Batista restart, 64 from goal. Great inside shot straight into Lee. Well, he doesn't go, doesn't look at the backhand this time, but looks to reset to Miller. Just a short lateral to maintain possession. Across to Ung, having to get it from her toes. Batista. Spicy Chili shifted their entire formation to the far side of the field. They keep their keep all their cutters right in front of the disc to open up side for forward and lateral movement. A um, couple of really deep receivers there, putting their hands up saying going for it and Christina Van obliges, but not enough power on it. That's right. And we can see their chili stacking in front of their handlers, knowing that the handler will be looking for that lateral movement and then breaking into that open space backing themselves to beat their defender in a foot race. Clean block there from Emma Smith. Very happy with herself on that one for reading that play. And Spicy Chili have called the timeout. Not uncommon to see that happen in a point where there's been a number of turnovers, Laura. That is true. Uh, the longer the points get, the more fatigued everybody gets. Uh, and it's a good option then to take a timeout, give everybody a breather and a drink. And I will throw it down to Chantel Jones on the sideline. We've just had a quick chat with Chile captain Rachel, uh, who also happens to be a left-hander, and she has mentioned that she's struggling with her flicks because they're just flopping over in the wind. Um, it'll be really good to see how their long shots go um, with taking that into account. Thanks, Chantel. And Rachel may have she very powerful backhand on the left side. So typically when the defensive team picks a side to force a throw to throw to, they'll almost always pick the forehand side so the right side of the thrower's body which is generally the forehand side for many throwers but left hand throwers have the advantage there where they get where they're given their stronger throw the backhand yes uh rachel mehatch uh very strong thrower represented in under 24s for australia um and it'll be interesting to see how the sugar magnolias manage that left-handed throw yeah. uh whether they decide to move the defender around to be more of a straight up uh, defense mm. to block that throw or whether they maintain their force and allow her to have that backhand. Yeah. 
course, confidence with throwing it. You just need to na nail one or two sort of me shorter ones and a couple of medium ones and then really build your confidence to unleash the long throws. So we'll see. Offense had to set first, then defense is allowed to set. And they've switched to a zone formation just to throw Sugar Magnolia's out of shape a bit. So they'll need to adjust very quickly on the restart here. The violation's called that the restart didn't happen properly, I believe. So, Holly Halpert Smith, the game advisor there, Leanne King just checking in with her. It's what the rule should be. Yeah, so, I think uh, a few players started moving a bit too early, I think, there, Laura. Yes. Uh, players can't move until the disc has been checked in. Yep. Great backhand shot through that zone to Smith. Yeah. Lane gets a follow up. Adams. They transition to a match defense now. Thompson. Lateral, huge layout bid for there from Emma Smith. Huge. Left uh, her feet to get two hands underneath it. She did. And we heard a chilly counting there counting the passes mm. until they transitioned into that person-to-person -person defense. We'll talk a bit about that one once this goal is scored. This is just tactic we haven't seen a lot so far this weekend, but it's a pretty common one. Nicole Ward, King, pumps it long with Adams all one out all in a row. She's going to have to work to run this one down. Can she get there? Not quite. Again, that disc, disc coming right over her head. Uh, difficult to read. Very difficult and floating up in that wind a long time. It's much easier when you just have to look over a shoulder rather than try and tilt your head back or spin on your feet. Yeah, very, very hard to run full tilt with your head at that angle. Miller to Lee. Pumps up the line, a great defensive block there from King. Saw her coming in, but of course she is called the foul. I think so either was contact made or she might have had the disc already. Did you see that one, Laura? Did you get a look at that? I did not get a look at that one. Uh, watching it on the replay. But no. 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 They've had a chat in Kings. Um, yeah, it's left that uncontested, so it's going to remain with Kushir. Taps it back in. It was great heads up awareness there from King to rush in for that one. Van. Mm -hmm. You see King staying out there in that lane, knowing that Spice and Chili try to work it up that sideline, which leaves enough uh, cutter free. I think it's maybe Kite Beatty at the back who's been left free. So Spice and Chili will try and work it around those markers and get it to this low side. That recognition of not having a defender, very important. Yep. Yeah, they've got numbers out this side. And Lee yep, spots Kite Beatty on her own for the nice, easy goal. It's high risk, high reward defense, but... It is. We have Daniel on the far sideline there. Daniel, what have you seen? Yeah, I just had a quick chat with Jasper, the coach of uh, Chile. He mentioned that they haven't thrown many zones at the moment and they're considering it. They're going to th throw it on for a few passes and see how the Sugar Mags cope. Mm, interesting. And we saw Chile there choosing not to use utilise the zone for the full length of the field, mm. uh, limiting it to the first couple of throws and then transitioning to a person-to-person -person defence as they got closer to their end zone. Yeah, that's usually a signal that the sideline players, that's why we heard them counting out loud. They were counting the number of passes and there would have been a predetermined number, usually three or four, um, where they'll switch to that match defence. So that would have been the plan coming out of that timeout. Yep just to try and stop any set plays that Sugar Magnolias may have had. So 4-2 now. Sugar yeah. Magnolias will be looking to lift their energy, lift their intensity, and have a bit of a comeback, I think. Yeah, I think they'll still try and back their long shots. They're starting to, their throws are starting to come out a lot cleaner than they were 15 minutes ago. Now that all of their hands have had a chance to warm up in this chilly breeze. Mayhouse sends a pull-up. Newcastle will start from 42 out. Lang unguarded. Back to Smith. Smith looking to the high side. Finds Morris Jackson. And a shorter reset to Ewan. 
Yeah, it's got Startup moving laterally across the field. Has to slide in to try and get that one. It's really hard to hit those lateral throws, isn't it? It is. Uh, to know how much uh, speed and distance to put on to make sure that you've got separation from your defender. Yeah, so there we go. Unleashes that backhand we were talking about earlier, but Daisy Ewan had the advantage there and safely sees it to the ground. Yes, uh, good knowledge, good position, good look at the disc. Sugar Magnolia's have their... I thought the cut is very deep, but they've isolated Stoddard out at the front. Winds up, but no one's looking deep. Much more confident movement with their throws here. Newcastle. Pumps a big throw up. Tilly Smith looking for Morris Jackson, who reins it in. Keeps her toes in at the back with a great one-handed overhead grab. Lovely. Lovely work there from uh, Sugar Magnolias. And Sugar Magnolias really utilising their anchors, their handlers, getting a couple of uh, down-the-line passes, but then happy to move them back to the handlers and then reset and go again. And yeah, we spoke a bit about before that though we thought they were losing too much ground on those resets. And it looks like they've, you know, obviously I wouldn't think they'd be listening to us, but I think we just thought the same <laughs> way that their handles are really hustling up once they've got that first throw just to provide that easy reset option and not lose the yards and we saw yeah much more confident movement of the disc when that was happening yeah and this long throw is such a great chase down there from uh tilly so another timeout called this time sugar magnolia's called it each team getting three timeouts to use per game the maximum of two in any half. So it's rare that you'll see a team use all three in a game. Typically they'll burn maybe two each over the 100 minutes, but called for a number of reasons. It could be tactical adjustment, could just be to have a rest. Yeah, we did see Sugar Magnolias using their timeouts yesterday. Uh, running with a shorter roster, only 17 players, does mean that uh, a couple of quick points can exhaust their whole squad. So not afraid to use the timeouts to give themselves a bit of a break, a bit of a refresh to come together uh, and then explode out of them. So we see Leanne King, the leader of Magnolia is there, Jasper Pentland, the coach of Spicy Chili. Lovely. 4-3 to Spicy Chili, a tightly contested game. No one team getting away too much. We knew this was going to be a tussle. We didn't think the team was going to get much of a breakaway. Spicy Chili had a two-goal lead there, but they still had the advantage here of starting the next point on offense. They do. They will be working at upwind. Uh, we've seen them... Uh, throw some very good passes into the wind so mm. it doesn't trouble them too much but it is a slight disadvantage so I think that Sugar Magnolia is there Man King with a spin pull not often you see them Batista hustling up to quickly restart gets the first pass off to Evie Miller they've got, a, they've got that flat mark you mentioned before Laura trying to prevent any Easy upfield movement, force him to go lateral and short and win. Looking lateral, hasn't got many ahead of her to Yvette and win. Miller. Looking upfield, has eyes at the eyes for the end zone, but no one there. Short to Khan win. Pops it up over the top looking for Kush here. Then grab that time on the sideline and tries to push it up the line again, but Unsuccessful in that. Sugar Magnolias will have their work cut out for them here, coming down from within. Surely they've just got to shoot this one long, go for territory. They do have a player going long and then coming under. Um, throw into traffic and it's hit the ground. So military start, about 25 from goal. Finds Matheson. Up the line to Miller. Huge bid there from the defender from Sugar Mags. And 
Means the left to throw her on guard for just that moment, but you've got to go for those ones. Courtney Thompson there getting off her feet. Big commitment there from Thompson, trying to prevent that up the line, that then turned into a very quick goal for Spicy Chili. It's a bit of a set play we're seeing there from Spicy Chili a lot. You see there that Miller, well, she threw the under to Cass Matheson and then immediately followed to go up the line. You can see her there just off the left to get that follow-up pass from Matheson. It was big, huge <laughs> from Thompson there. But had to go for it because she knew that if she didn't, then uh, it was just going to be an easy collection for them. If you go big like that and you miss it, you've left the thrower open. It is a risk and reward situation there. And that handler movement from Chile, uh, the real give and go from the handler being mm. very active, uh, kind of a hallmark of this spicy Chile team. Yeah. The... Uh, a couple of Sugar Magnolia defenders were certain Thompson was going to get that one, so we're just left standing thinking, all right, what do we do on offense? But the spicy chili cutters just reacted immediately to being unguarded and nice, easy goal for Khan to win in the end there. Mayhatch sends it low and flat, putting it at about the brick mark. Smith. Lang gets an upfield reset, but Lang can't reel it in. Bit of a wobble on the disc. It's hard to grab those with one hand. It is there, but such a great undercut from Lang. Mehatch gets that break forehand out, finds Preston. Latch of a Mehatch. Wide backhand out looking for Buxer. Has to get low. Right on the doorstep now. Easy flick into Haley Tan for Spicy Chili's sixth goal. Yes, and that is the Rachel Mehatch backhand that we were talking about before, that easy flat backhand out into space. Yeah, it looks like she's, she's found her range now. So, And that's going to be a hallmark of Spicy Chili's play is they like to all really cut away from the disc. A lot of teams have a tendency to cut towards. And the receivers there, fair element of trust, the receiver the receivers back the throwers to be able to hit that space and the throwers back in the receivers just to be able to run it down and Rachel Mehatch also having the step there on her defender which let her set up that backhand mm. when she saw the open space uh, unguarded for those precious two steps and then that throw being released there uh, we have Daniel on the far sideline Daniel what are you seeing uh, Chile really starting to warm into the game now the sugar mags came out fast early but it seems like Chile is starting to get on top in this game Definitely sounds like it. They've found another gear, spicy chili, and sugar magnolias. It's not, it's not a panicked play, but they absolutely have to send this one long, just to they've got to at least give themselves a chance to score offensively first of all, but to defensively cover more of the field. Alicia on with the pull there. Uh, too many times they're leaving themselves with only 20 meters to defend. Pull comes to a stop and Hall's got the restart about 40 from goal. Pops it over the top to King. There we go. Pumps up. Look at the backhand. Looking for Nicole Ward. Going to have to do some work. Can't run it down. But like we said, not a bad option given that Spicy Chili have got a restart their offense from the back. And it looks like it's going to set up a zone. So that probably a tactic they knew they were going to use. Yep. Set up the long throw and then set the zone. Yep. Spicy Chili taking up to the sideline where they've definitely got work. Thompson versus DeWin. Thompson's got the back position. Makes light work of it. Alicia Ung coming into her assist, but Thompson had the clear position there. The easy knockdown Hall sends it forward to Thompson again, getting really involved in this point now. She's got a not unguarded wide option, has a look at it, but instead goes to the near sideline looking for Adams. He cleans that one up comfortably and Sugar Magnolias with their fourth goal. Yes, the Sugar Magnolias heeding your advice there, Simon. They must be listening. <laughs> uh, deciding to shoot it long while going downfield. Uh, Chantel here. Chantel. Earlier in that point there, we actually saw a set play from Sugar Magnolias. They put King up in the middle as their primary cutter, mm. um, who has been playing as a handler so far. Um, she's made the primary cut, been successful, and she's sent it long. Um, which they've then put on a zone. So you're perfectly right in your prediction there. Yeah. 
And it's good to set your set a strong throw as a primary cutter sometimes because the cutter will get that, if they're free enough, they'll get that two, two or so seconds unguarded to have a, their shot of choice. And with a powerful thrower like King, mm. that two seconds is all she needs to know exactly where she wants to put that disc. So 6-4 to the Melbourne team. May hatch to start 40 from goal. Resets to Tan. To Van. Looking for gaps through, finds Mia Hatch. Mia Hatch has got pressed and streaking deep, but can't get the clean throw out. Gets a nice little one to her Flores to get some yards and goes for the big shot to Preston now. Preston's got Matheson looking deep. She's going to have to run this one down and catches it about five metres from the back. Lovely work there from Matheson and Preston. Mm. That longer throw to Preston really breaking that zone, uh, putting it past a lot of the defenders, uh, leaving Matheson with only one defender to contend with for the disc. Yep. Daniel, what have you noticed? I just had a quick chat with Louis Batista from uh, Chile. I mentioned how Sugar May's got off to such a quick start, and she said, yeah, we're not really worried about it. Uh, they spoke last night about controlling their game and playing their game. Uh, it's very much been Chile's game so far. Definitely. The momentum is very much in their favour. The zone look we saw from Sugar Manx there uh, really, instead of encouraging lateral passes, tried to shut off the lateral passes and force them to work through the middle. But Spicy Chile were just far too comfortable with that style of play. So do you think we might see Sugar Magnolias next time they're defending switch that up again? I think we will. I think we might see them return to their traditional mark and cup. Uh, which forces uh, lateral movement to one side, but then tries to trap the disc on that side. And with a wind like this, if you get trapped on the low side of the field where the wind is going to push the disc out, it can be really dangerous. Yeah. Thompson. Leanne setting up. King setting up downfield again. They've got to it. She's looked up before she's caught it. And Adams had about 10 metres on a defender. That would have been an easy goal. Miller to Chen. Between and she overcooks over the backhand. Sugar Magnolias with another chance here. Uh, a person to person mark from Chile as Sugar Magnolias go downwind, setting up in a vertical stack in the middle of the field. Yeah, very typical vertical formation there. Hall resets to King. Finds Adams. Adams long looking for the receiver, but Louis Batista. Got to it first. For the comfortable knockdown. So she'll pick it up. She's pinned on the sideline, so heads over the top to Elizabeth Chen. Bitchwin. Puts a high forehand up. There's going to be some bodies underneath this one. In comes Thompson, and Thompson collided with her own teammate there, Emma Smith, but and uh, collected Dorothy Lee on the way there, but no call made. No call. Looks like it was all fair and just some incidental contact. Yeah, I think just the collision of teammates then ricocheted onto Lee when the disc was already done. So I think she was comfortable that she had an opportunity to have a clean go at it. It wasn't disadvantaged by that bump there. Huge put up looking for Thompson. Thompson versus between them. Thompson gets ahead of it. Too strong, but oh, puts oh. <laughs> Puts it too far for Adams. Who we know is fast, but... And a beautiful put from Hoare there down that far sideline. That was a great shot. Yeah, Beth Bichuan just couldn't get a hand in that contest. So Spice Chile to restart 64 from goal. And yeah, Sugar Man Goalies really want to pin them on that high side. So Batista, she... She so doesn't have an easy pass that way. You take that as your last option. You really try and work it back this way first, back towards this side of the field. And that she does over the top to Elizabeth Chen. Bichuan. Chen. Again, wants to work it this way. Keep it on the low side to really open up the space in the middle of the field. Batista, Miller, a 1-2. Further up the line to Lee. Lee's got a clean shot. Doesn't 
You only have about one second to take those. <laughs> Batista looking to go up the line. Pops a big blade over the top. That's going to drop short, but Alex Kite Beard, he runs in to meet it for Spicy Chili's eighth goal. Real, uh, real cowboy stuff from Louis Batista there. <laughs> some of those, some of those shot choices. Yeah, and we saw the Sugar Magnolias there trapping the disc on that side of the field or attempting to. Spicy Chili recognizing what they were trying to do and really actively looking to break through the cup towards the camera side of the field. Cool. We're going to head down to Daniel Clinton on the sideline. Yeah, I'm joined by Daisy Ewan, one of the captains of the Sugar Mags. Daisy, what do you need to do in the second half to get back in this? Oh, look, watching our throws going back to basics would be a really good point. Um, I think mixing up our defence, I think we got a few runs on it at the start, but now the other team's starting to crack it, so let's put a new look on. All right, well, basics. good luck for the second half. Hope you can bring this one back. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with the second half soon. It's about love! 
It's about you! It's about your passion to do what you want to do in the moment, in the now! This is not time! This is eternal! I, I want to see the world where the, uh, where the global heart is awakened. That is what team I'm on. It's not too late because it's all about how you think. Wouldn't you want people to encourage each other instead of judge each other? Stop! You're all looking at me! Panya, how is it doing this morning? Um, yeah, we're going well. Uh, a bit of wind that we haven't been expecting, but uh, I think we've adjusted quite well. And um, Well, you took half here. You're up against the Sugar Magnolias. They came out yeah. firing. They did. They did. We didn't expect it. We watched their game against Phoenix last night and tried to do a bit of homework, but they're really stepping up their game, doing some throws that are just so good. So, um, yeah, we've had to adjust a lot because of them. All right, well, good luck for the second half. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you. We've seen, just in the meantime, Sugar Magnolia's there. Come out with the first goal of the half. Again, we saw Leanne King operating out of the stack there. She hit uh, Daisy Adams with her first, the second pass. She's usually on the end of those long ones, Laura. She is, and we also saw Danielle Adams there uh, participating in that play. And... It's easy sometimes to fall into a trap when you're a defender to assume what the cutters, what the offense is going to do based on what they've done the whole game. And then as soon as they do something different, wow, you, you've lost them. You're out of your comfort zone. So I think, yeah, some assumptions were made about what uh, Adams might have done there. And I think that's why she got so free on that uh, cut towards the disc. Yes, and that looked like a set play from the Sugar Magnolias yep. there. It looked like they had identified who they wanted as their primary and secondary cutters out mm. of that stack uh, and how they wanted the flow of that point to go. A real simple one, two, three, four. This time they come out on defence. Miller. Really guarding spaces towards the disc. Lee to Chen. He's got tan, wide and long. Has one look, decides not today. And between having to die for that one, the throw is too high for the intended to target Batista. So Smith will restart play. Big forward gainer to Doolin. Morris Jackson. Yeah, definitely moving to this with a lot more confidence now compared to earlier in the game. Pumps the big back. Smith, the big backhand up. Few bodies underneath it. Sarah Lang finds front position. Takes a clean catch. Morris Jackson. Back to Smith. Not much happening ahead of her. Has to reset. Looks to Ewan who moves it up the line. A nice easy throw there to finish the goal to Jessica Morris Jackson for, I think, her third goal. Yes, and we saw uh, Ewan there uh, with that sharp up the line uh, handler cut, uh, receiving that disc back strongly. Mm. Always good to get a reset, a little bailout throw that actually gains you an advantage. It's a very common tactic in Australian Ultimate. And put her into that power position, that position where her defender is behind her and she has a couple of seconds to throw anything she wants. Yeah. So 8-6. Looks like that five-minute break at half has done the Sugar Magnolias the world of good. Yeah, some time to get your heads together, some time to remind each other why you're here, to build each other back up, uh, to talk strategy. Um, lots of things that happen in halftime, and it's great to see the Sugar Magnolias coming out firing again. 
That was a great read on the disc by Sarah Lang to come down with that sky ball. Tilly Smith, nice, clean little throw. Crucial point here for Sugar McNally, so they can get this damn window. Bring it back to a one-goal margin and stay in touch. Me Hatch. That zone look again, trying to move them to the high side. Um, Me Hatch. Trying to look through the middle, doesn't have a lot. Comes White and Win, who has to rush forward to meet it, but not quite enough. So Sugar McNally's with a chance here, about 30 from goal. King to Adams, watch this. Oh no, she spotted <laughs> Emma Smith heading out wide. Preston with the easy intercept. Gets a couple of clean passes to move. Matheson tidies up the scraps. Back to Preston. Finds Matheson again. Continues to win. Matheson doing the work this point. Sends it up high to Alicia Ong. And just like that, spicy chili go end to end as easy as you like. They do, and Ong had great foresight there to put her body between the Sugar Magnolia defender and the disc to safely receive it. Yep. Spicy chili is tough to stop their offensive flow. Once they've linked together two or three passes, very hard to get ahead of it. And the Sugar Magnolias there on that turn, uh, there was a bit of uh, discussion about whether they were going to go back into that zone look or whether they were going to go person-to-person matchup. And Spicy Chili exploited that yeah. uh, and moved the disc quickly, not allowing the Sugar Magnolias to really get a good set. Yeah, offense isn't going to wait for you. Not against a team like Spicy Chili. So Sugar Magnolias will need to keep scoring their O points just to stay in touch at this point. It's... First of 15 goals, wins the game. The time cap for this game is 100 minutes. We're still a long way from that, so I suspect that the 15 goal target will be reached before that. The Sugar Magnolias did mount a late game comeback in the game against Phoenix yesterday, mm. uh, so I wouldn't put it past them to do that again. Yeah, we, so we know they're capable. They're not just going to roll over. Miller. Sends along, let go of a little, let go of the throw a fraction early. So they've only got about 30 metres of field to defend here. Smith. Surely giving them some easy lateral passes. I think they're just getting prepared for the long shot here. Morris Jackson. Ewan. Just taking some incremental advancement here. Metre or two at a time. Ewan and Smith working nicely together. Latchell to Stoddard. And Stoddard sends a bullet wide looking for, I think that was Morris Jackson, but she's put a foot on the line. As, uh, sorry to, I think it's Whitney Doolin there. She's put a foot on the line as she's caught it. And of course, on the line is out of bounds. Yeah, so it's Oh, so close. The reset for Miller's gone too wide for Batista. So Sugar Magnolia is from their goal line. This can be a really, really critical for the Sugar Magnolias to remain uh, stable, to remain S chilly with Smith this. pick it up. They're going to isolate one cutter here on that high side. There we go. Bang. Oh, no. Jessica Morris-Jackson made the assumption that she was going to have it. And has put it down. Oh, couldn't get clean hands on it. That was a huge opportunity there, and as we see Morris Jackson, slight clash there with Haley Tan, who's caught the foul straight away. Morris Jackson, no argument there, uncontested. So that disc will remain with Haley Tan. Just need to, Sugar Magnolia's just need to stop the forward movement, make them go laterally. Haley Tan puts it up for. Bill, I think I might be in a high stall count there, so I just had to get rid of it. Of course, players having 10 seconds to dispose of the disc. Smith right on the sideline now, 30 from goal. Look at 
the big wide lateral. But it drifts away from Lang. Just uh, unguarded, sends it up looking for Dan, who just about has it drop right into her lap, but she only saw it at the last second. She did that just coming straight over her head, very hard to track. Smith, bullet of a forehand, and Doolan had to sit there and wait for it, which gave time for Miller to run through and knock it away. Batista. Van. Takes the time, sizing up all options. It's a nice inside shot to Batista, but too much on it and goes straight through her hands. There wasn't much happening out of the stack there for Chile. She didn't have many options. Doolan there with the throw going through her hands again. Not getting many clean looks here either team. Perhaps a bit of fatigue setting in with these throws. Yep. Another short lateral there from Miller. And Tilly Smith wasting no time picking up, sending it. That's got to drop short right into the lap of Jessica Morris-Jackson. Another goal for her. Beautiful quick, rec quick recognition there from both players. Uh, the receiver going deep immediately and the handler picking up that disc to send it as soon as she saw what was happening. Nice quick restarts on offense there, Daniel. Yeah, I just have some results from other matches for you. Uh, Ellipsis are currently running a freight train over the Heads of State Phoenix team. It's 10-0. Uh, and on the far field, it's uh, Factory. They're in a very, very tight game against Rogue. It was 6-5 last I heard. Ooh. Factory, the local Canberra team. And Rogue playing out of Sydney. We'll see Rogue in action later today. We will playing against Manly, also from Sydney. Cox, nice. some crosstown rivalry there. The Sydney Derby. One of the Sydney Derby. There's a few Sydney teams here. Sydney being probably the dominant city in Australian Ultimate. Looking here, the wind is consistent, still blowing left to right across the field. King puts it higher, plenty of hang time, enough time for the defence to get down and set. Mehatch, Lee. Mehatch again, I think. Magnolia's recognised they've just got to stop those, those strings of passes. The longer they can keep the disc in the hands of a thrower, the better. Chen. Not a lot happening upfield, so resets back to Lee. Flores, the Chen. Chen having to catch a trailing edge. Tricky, those ones. Yeah, Chile not really being able to advance the disc up the field much at all, relying on those lateral passes and just those small incremental gains. Yep, so King to pick it up. Fires the lateral in to Hall. Hall looking for Adams and Cat Bucks with the run through block. May hatch to restart. 25 from goal. Urging her cutters to come towards her rather than away. Wants the restart. Reset, sorry. Finds Chen. Gives her the one, two. Resets the count. Buxer now on the lateral. Fires it back into May hatch. She's got a couple of cutters hanging out on the near side in this corner. So she fires out the lateral to the event in a win. Pick's been called. Did affect that throw, so going back to Mihatch there. I'll reset to where they all were before that throw. Keep an eye on Alex Kite Beatty. She was at the very left of frame there. Again, she's been left without an active defender, so if they can, Spice Jelly can get a, lat a good lateral movement out this side, she'll be completely free. Bit too much traffic, so and Chen goes for the big wide backhand. Not the intended was, <laughs> was definitely looking for Kite Beatty on this side, but the throw drops in short and Cat bucks up. Collects her first goal. Good heads up offense there, keeping your eye on the disc and recognizing that any disc in the air is yours to catch. Yep. 
Of course, you've got a bit of a margin for error when you're, when you're shooting from the middle of the field rather than a sideline. A few more hands under the disc as Spicy Chili take that point. Yeah, to throw a list right up there, but... Bucks are straight to it. Daniel. Yeah, just want to talk a little bit about the conditions. It never gets this cold in Newcastle. Uh, and I think that now it's starting to warm up, the sugar mags, maybe they're becoming a little bit more comfortable. The sun's out. The temperature's starting to lift a bit. We're expecting a warmer afternoon. It's great conditions for some competitive ultimate. Yes, exactly. Not too hot. Won't dehydrate the players too much. Won't add to their fatigue. 10-7 to Spicy Chili. Not game over. Three goals is a very manageable margin. This land just inbound, so will be fielded from where it is by Tilly Smith. Unga still unguarded. Puts the shot up the line looking for Lang. And a teammate coming in. Good communication there to sort out who had it. Sorry, Morris Jackson that was with the catch. And Lang had had a couple of goes at that one. Couldn't secure it. Batista. Forward to Ung. Ung's got a long option on. Doesn't, doesn't follow it. Heads in short. Matheson. To Van. This time Van recognises that long cut but puts too much on it. And Sugar Mags will get another look at offence. Two Sugar Magnolias defenders in that little pack there. And the Chile player turning to look at the disc and losing the momentum to follow it forward. Smith. Finds Stoddard. Stoddard urging someone to head deep for her, but... All the, all the receivers are very deep at the moment, so Tilly Smith has to put one out long and wide. She was looking for Retzlaff there, but... Never clean throw. Batista goes high, looping backhand right into the lap of Panya Preston for her second goal. And good communication there between Matheson and Preston. Uh, Matheson dropping back to give Preston the space to collect that disc safely. Good uh, one pass offense there. <laughs> teams uh, teams start to do that when they've really got their confidence up and they're very comfortable. So with a four goal margin now to Chile's favor. The gap is widening. Sugar Magnolias have some work to do. Yeah, they, they must score this goal to, to stay in touch. Yeah, they are coming down offense downwind. Uh, so that does suit their strong throwers, being able to put it out to some of those tall receivers. We'll see whether they follow our advice again this time. Yeah. I think we'll see another set play. And I think that Spicy Chili are going to respond by... I think they'll stick with match, but I think they'll try and uh, apply a straight up force where they try and force the throws out lateral rather than downfield. Yeah, cut off both of those big options there with either a forehand or a backhand. Force them to look to the side. Yeah. Of course, that's predicated on a good distance on the pull to pin them back and a good run down just to apply that early. So not heaps of distance on the pull, but good hang time. So they're there in time to have defence locked on before the first pass. Smith lateral. To Hora is centre, long and wide, looking for Adams. Adams having to drop back. Can't round it in. Can't, but that was a set play yep. with the Sugar Magnolias stacking very tight on this near side to us here, leaving so much space for Adams to run in and grab that disc. I've applied that zone again, but we've seen how easily Spicy Chili can work their way through this. Mehatch doing the work this possession. Finds Miller, but throws just behind her. Couldn't get clean hands on it. So Sugar Magnolias get a second possession. King wants to wind up the back end. Uh, 
And uh, I think there's been a bit of a bump that's caused Leanne King to lose her feet here. Yep, just a trip on the feet there, so foul call there. Daniel, what have you seen? Sugar Mag's going back to the timeless classic uh, huck and play D. Yep. <laughs> Defend the whole field, not half of it. Yeah. A really tight cup around the disc there, trying to force it to that side of the field away from the camera and trap them there. So King and Bucks are just being clear on what they were, and now they're just discussing what the stall count should be on. So it's going to start from a stall count of five. So not a lot of time to pick an option and get it out. Big wide throw going up, clears everyone, and hits the deck. So me hatch to start. The zone sets up around her. Won't bother her too much, having so many lilac-coloured shirts in close range. She'll try and move it to the low side first as a priority and just move it to the high side as a bonus. Cushia finds space. Miller got two completely unguarded receivers deep, but no clean throw available to her. Me hatch. Fires it low, looking for Cushier again. Mihaj calling those deep receivers in a little bit too long, maybe for the conditions. Yeah. King winds up the backhand, looking for Adams. Adams this time gets two hands to it. No one ahead of her, though. Short lateral to Smith. Couple of options in close. Doesn't like the traffic she's got in front of her, so... Heads back to Smith. Oh, sorry, to King, sorry. King only has eyes for a goal. Does not want to have to go lateral or behind. And there we go. Heads lateral to Ferguson. Right on the doorstep. Nice little inside shot to Emma Smith for the goal. Lovely work there from the Sugar Magnolias, uh, showing their patience. King looking at that corner for a long time before <laughs> she eventually came around to Ferguson. Um, but can't argue with the result there. And that was a lovely little inside pass to Smith. Yeah. Just finding that gap. Of course, the end zone runs very deep, but you only have to score just in... The score in the first metre of oh, it's as good as the score in the 18th metre. Score 11-8 now. So, Sugar Magnolia, they're in touch, but it's a big ask from here. We still don't think this game's going to go to 100 minutes because that, that would be Sugar Magnolia's best case scenario is if the score cap came down and they only needed four or five to win. But it's a tall order to hold th them. throw another seven goals. To hold, yeah, spicy chili out from scoring for that long when there's 27 minutes yeah. uh, left on the clock. Of course, spicy chili only need four more to win. Preston. Tight lateral throw to win. Not much coming at her. So heads wide to Khan win and. Ewan had to pull up there, so it's called the pick. But they agree that the throw was already in there, so it was likely to be completed anyway, so it'll start with Nguyen. And Ewan gets to cut, make up the ground. Put that mark on. Nguyen, Flores, Chen. Two grabs at it. Not sure to Flores. Nearly sized up to lay that out, but it's stayed in the air long enough for her. Preston. Clean hand block there from Daisy Ewan. You can hear the big thunk. You can. <laughs> As it's come off her hand, it drifted out of bounds. Great work there, predicting what, floor, got what the thrower wanted. Yeah. And that couldn't have come at a better time. Sugar Magnolia's desperately needed defensive conversion now. Oh, Nguyen, she's got the lit, just enough of a nudge, and uh, Preston agrees. 
cause the drop, so Ewan will take the disc. I've got about 45 metres to work up here, and violation called as Stoddard was <laughs> too eager to get going. <laughs> nice audible call there from Preston. <laughs> Ewan just getting clarity on what happened and just Steve Baker there just advising them on the restart process. There we go, disc in now. Signified by the defender tapping the disc. The short lateral, Tilly Smith looking at her hands, wondering why they've let her down. Yeah, Chile streaming deep. This is close enough that they're looking yeah, it'll be a set play here. They're going to isolate Flores versus Doolan. In the inside shot to Doolan, find space. A couple of extra Sugar Max defenders came across to help out that one-on-one, -on -one, but Batista threaded the needle yep. and put it in the lap of the receiver. Beautiful throw there from Chile. And like you were saying earlier, that one pass offense really showing that they're comfortable here. Uh, they're not uh, looking to center. They're not looking to settle. Uh, they're happy to just move the disc quickly. You can see here, Batista, she's directing traffic as she's walking to the disc. Of course, you can't just, you have to be moving towards the disc. You can't delay the game like that. But yeah, she's, you know, role as assistant, playing assistant coach. Yeah. Her voice is always very prominent out there on offense. Yeah. And uh, in situations like that, Chile would have practiced what they would want to happen. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably less of you can use codes. They have a set play for that. They know that an isolation will be called uh, and they know where the rest of the stack wants to stand for that. So they're moving towards the end game now, but Sugar Magnolias just. We'll be focused just on this goal. Let's get this one in, keep the game alive. That's it. Points difference does matter here. It can affect standings. So they will be looking to ensure that there is as small as difference as possible. Yeah. Really rushing to get the offense going on this one. King. Looking up, nodding, pumps the forehand out. There's Adams at her, on her own at the back. Right on the goal line. So just a short goal there. This barely left her hand to get in the receivers, but... Effective nonetheless. Uh, uh, Adams with the assist there for Sugar Magnolias, bringing the score to 12-9. Never let perfect be the enemy of good. <laughs> a two-meter pass worth just as many goals as a 30-meter pass. And that forehand there. Yeah, what a cannon. What a throw. Not quite in the goal line, Daniel. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about the matchup. Uh, Danny Adams mm. is uh, copying the matchup from Rachel Mihach. It's Mihach playing defensively on Adams, and Adams has had the goods so far. Mihach is really struggling to get close enough and really affect those long throws put up by King and, and by McCarthy. Yeah, we, we're thinking that Mihach might be just underestimating the, the long throw. She seems to be playing right under Adams, like right towards the disc. So... And Adam, she's been on the end of maybe oh, seven or eight of those ones heading that way, Laura. Yeah, she's a lovely long receiver for them. She's mm. got that little bit of height, that little bit of wingspan. She also has a great read yeah. on the disc. You can see her looking at the disc. She's able to predict even with the wind where it's going to yeah. go. And that pull's come out nearly sideways. So that's landed out of bounds. They have the option to take a brick, but that would lose them about 20 metres. So they're just going to take it from where it went out of bounds. Bichuan, just on halfway. Puts it up the line and great defensive read there by Smith. She knew that that was their play. Picks it up, sends up the second pull, tries to get more yards. It's going to fall in short and Stoddart somehow came up with that. But in the meantime, we've had a uh, injury call, I think. I think so. Just on some other players oh, off the side. <laughs> the wind accidentally stood on... Uh, Jessica Morris Jackson's foot there, and uh, while wearing the the studded boots, copping one of them to the top of your foot stings a little bit. But that was a fantastic grab by Stoddard, out of position, and was able to reach in over the top with Bichuan. 
It's a nice forward reset there to Smith. You can have plenty of voices now. The Sugar Magnolia sideline more animated as they're close to a defensive conversion. Doolan back to Smith. Smith pumps the forehand up looking for... And that's uh, Jessica Morris-Jackson with a slightly damaged foot. <laughs> Didn't seem to affect her there as she bolted out of that stack, got free and got the disc low to the ground as well. And that has lifted the spirits of Sugar Magnolias. 12, 10, all of a sudden. They're back in the game. If there's anything we've learned from the Sugar Magnolias the last couple of days, they love a comeback. Yeah. They love fighting back into position. Uh, and you could see the determination on all of their faces then yeah. uh, that they wanted that disc and they were willing to put their bodies on the line for it. Great patience there by Doolan just to get that easy reset. And it allowed Smith just to head out to this low side of the field. Daniel, what are you saying? That was Kiara Black with a nice layout goal there towards the cameras. We've got a great view of that one. Terrific grab. So now the Sugar Magnolias have that eighth defender, the wind. Can they take advantage? King puts up the pull. Plenty of hang time. Miller to knock it down, feel it quickly, get it to Batista. Again, there's that flat mark, forcing lateral movement. Miller. Urging her, receivers to move towards her, but she's put the high throw up and straight into the hands of Leanne King. Moves it quickly to Hall. Hall pops it up, looking for Thompson. I think we're definitely going to see Sugar Magalones do more of this. Just run and gun. Yeah. Not try and wait around. Especially pumping it for distance down that way, forcing Chile further and further back uh, so they have more and more field to work it up. Just uh, centre of the... Centre of the corridor, but 64 from goal. The wind's starting to really howl now. A pick called in the stack. So some tight traffic in there as the players arrange themselves to avoid collisions. Alicia Ung there got free of Leanne King, but... Just to Chen. Good collect there from Chen. Bit more frantic defense, a lot more frantic cutting here from Spice and Chile. There's a lot of traffic to work in. Miller wants to push it out of there. Chen, Machu to Ung, Batista. She's got one or two long options, opts for a medium. One looking for Tam. It's in the air for your players underneath it, but Tam, what a great grab. Batista straight through the hands. A couple of rush throws here from Spicy Chili we've seen in the last few minutes. Yeah, whether fatigue is setting in or yeah. whether the Sugar Magnolia Adams is straight up force. Leanne's got to put this surely. King, she sent it up. Adams versus Buxa. Adams gets that front position straight through the hands. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is a rare drop. Yeah, but Danny Adams pushing forward there to get position. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just through the hands. Yeah. You see that grabber gear there from Haley Tan really getting up. The wind has really picked up here. Matissa trapped in that high corner, but pumps it up the line, just had to do something, and Tan did her best to keep it alive. It would have been a high stall count there, so just had to move it forward rather than concede the turnover right on the goal line. It would have been in that far sideline hard to get off. That's King. This time Thompson's gone long. She's looking to move it laterally to Hall. Hall keeps it going laterally. But no clean catches available. Batista pulls it to 10. Keeps moving to Miller. Ong. Tan. Actually moving in now, Batista got plenty of yards on it. She's got Cat Buxer on her own, pumps it up wind. Beautiful goal there by Spicy Chili. Good uh, response. Big yeah. response, working it up wind. Uh, Sugar Magnolias will be disappointed with that one after a couple of initial great looks down the field. 
the score now. 13-10. 13-10. So I'm, I'm hesitant to call it, Laura, because I've, I've been known to be very wrong before when I've made calls like that. So, But Spicy Chili, two, goals from the, two more goals from the win. Yeah, and if they get a turnover on this one, they will be working at downfield, which is an advantage. Uh, they've proven that they can get turnovers. Uh, so, but the way the Magnolias can sometimes grit their teeth, bear down and come back, uh, it's impossible to count them out just yet. Yeah. Chile definitely wanted to get this win on the board to take their record to two and two, because this afternoon they face tournament favourites Ellipsis. Who they've... Uh, Never beaten before, so getting a win on the board now, fairly crucial to their chances of a high finish. And of course, Sugar Man is still searching for their first win this afternoon. They have Factory. It'll be a very tough assignment for them. Smith and Ewan, working simple ones back and forth. Morris Jackson and Mehatch grabbing at the same time, but offense takes priority in those situations. Smith directing traffic, Stoddard. Keeping it alive, a great away pass, and Morris Jackson can't quite hang on to that one. Got two hands to it, but just the fingertips, Mehatch. Bichuan. Long lateral for me, Hatch. Sizes it up to die for it, but decided not to. It was probably a bit of out, out of her reach, so Sugar Magnolias now have another chance going upwind, about 15 from goal. Smith just walking to it, taking her time. Ewan. Looks off Stoddart. Smith pumps it up long and great. Grab there to secure Sugar Magnolia's 11th goal and keep this game going. And only two points in it now. Uh, we have Daniel over on the sideline. Daniel. Yeah, I've got some updates for you from the far field. Factory playing Rogue. They were up big time, 10-6 over Rogue. Rogue have since fought back into the game. It's now 11-9. Looks like that one's wow. going to go the distance. We knew that one was going to be a close one. Factory and Rogue have had plenty of great close battles over the years. The Canberra versus Sydney. Yeah, and I spoke to Julia Birchall, captain of Factory, earlier this morning. Uh, she said that all year it's been Manly, Rogue and Factory in the top three spots, and they've just sort of rotated who's taken out the top spots here on the Eastern uh, Championships. Yeah. Of course, we'll see Factory in action tomorrow here on KO Sports. So the game's still alive for Sugar Magnolias, but they need this defensive break. No more, no more delaying it. If it doesn't happen now, that'll be it. So King sends the roller pull up, going to pin them deep on that high sideline. And Miller having to rush to get it, and that's going to be time for Sugar Magnolias to set up this zone look. Yeah, and talking yesterday, we were talking about how the first pass is so pivotal to the momentum yep. of the team. Miller will try and move this latry, I think. Has one look upfield. Doesn't have a tidy look laterally, and down the disc goes through a couple of sets of hands. And Magnolias have a look at the conversion. Right on the doorstep now. And it's through the hands of uh, a defender, but a foul's been called. Some contact appears to have been made there, so I'll have a chat about what's happened. So we see Holly Halford-Smith, one of the game advisors, heading over. Let's see if we can listen in. Oh, they've agreed it's a contested foul. We'll go back to the previous thrower. Always the option if an agreement can't be reached for a, goal, for a call to be contested. So Nicole Ward, about two metres from goal, but very close to the sideline, so not much room to work in. It's 
play restarts. And goes up the line to King, but Miller heads up defense and throws herself in there to take the intercept, but King will almost certainly call a foul on that one. So the the call being made here, even though Miller got to her first, she couldn't have made that play without making contact, which does make it a foul. Yes, as Ultimate is a non-contact sport, uh, we might go down and see if we have the game advisor there. Nope. Uh, so, yeah, they've agreed it's contested foul. So I think Mill's argument is that because she got the clean intercept that it was, that it was fine, but... Um, yeah, they just, I think they just realised straight away they're not going to agree, so had the contest. And the violation's been called as the cutters move too early. And the game's close like this, you start to see the rule book come out. <laughs> you do, and tensions are high. It can make it harder to communicate. Nicole Watt still on this corner. Cutters rushing towards her, has to put this one up. Looking for Adams, but can't find her. And Good defensive pressure by Spicy Chili there. And the stall out's been called, so the 10 seconds was up. I don't think Ward's going to argue with it. Well, given that it was a throwaway anyway, it's Spicy Chili's disregardless. So, mm -hmm. bit of activity there on that <laughs> corner, but Spicy Chili going to come up with it. But again, they're in that very difficult corner to get out of, Batista. Wants to put it up the line, pumps it up looking for Flores. It's not going to get to her, but it's got them plenty of territory. And definitely out of that danger zone, down in that corner there. That corner, the wind just swirls around it, pushes yep. every disc out. It's so hard to get the disc out in any direction. Yep. Uh, so good work there for them to try and move it out. Yeah, trying to work your way around four defenders and into the wind. King pumps it up looking for Adams. Haley Tan gets up and knocks it away. Now a bit ready for that one, playing closer to Adams. Yeah, looking like they're setting up now in their zone. Still on that high sideline. Miller pumps one the other direction. A couple of numbers underneath that one, and that's knocked away by... Ferguson, I believe. Having to get up early to beat the two spicy chili receivers. Using her height to her advantage there. Poor King. Moves it to centre field now, so able to shoot forward and finding Adams on the under this time, but can't get to her. Batista to restart for Chile, about 30 from goal. Pumps the inside shot, finds Tan on her own. Tan has winds up the backhand, looking for a couple of receivers, finds the win. This time the inside shot to Flores, who's kept her back foot down and got Chile's 14th goal. What a game, three points the difference. Not easy, hard fought. Chantel is here. Chantel, what can you tell us? Uh, we just noticed uh, as that turnover occurred, Chile recognized that the Sugar Magnolias are looking for the huck and they actually put a straight up force on, which means the defender is standing right in front of the disc, which makes it hard for their big throwers like uh, King to send it long. Uh, worked in their favor, they got the turn and the goal. Of course, when Sugar Magnolias are playing their defense, they're setting an extra defender on that high side to make those uh, straight down the line shots difficult. But the risk of that is, if they're able to get around the defender and throw the disc to the low side, it means there's free players everywhere. And we've seen that happen a number of times today. Chile definitely moved the disc quickly enough to take advantage of that. It does, uh, and rec good recognition from the deep players to know when they're on and to put themselves in great positions there to receive those discs. So we've ticked over 93 minutes, but the score cap will remain at 15. Mee Hatch sends the pull deep. Fielded on the full by Ewan to Smith. Unguarded, so she has a, has a look long. Had a few receivers running away. Tries to find Lang on a short one, but the wind pushes the disc into the ground. Spicy Chili to win the game. About 25 metres to advance. Mee Hatch. 
Good inside shot to Preston. All the receivers very stretchy at the moment. Lots of room to play with through the hands of Van. And we can see the Sugar Magnolias there choosing to force towards that corner, mm. trying to bait those throws into the wind there. Yeah. Smith pumps it long, looking for Stoddart. Stoddart going to have to go early, but I think it's going to almost drift out of bounds. So the risk was there that if the disc fell to the ground, it would have come in from where the disc was thrown. But Preston just decided to make sure of it, knock it away, which means it'll be played from where that happened. So Mihach, about 35 metres to advance here. The receivers are all at least 10 metres in front of her. So she hits the forward reset to Preston. Preston to Van. Her second drop. Not a great point for Christina Van. The Sugar Magnolias moving up now, moving into a central stack as uh, Chile elect to go man person to person defense. You and Fine Smith, she's got Morris Jackson streaking long, high, floaty disc. Going to be a few underneath this one. And what a one handed grab from Morris Jackson. Plenty of players coming towards her head backwards to Ewan. Ewan's unguarded and tries to find Stoddard who. Had to come head back the other direction to try and meet it. And she's copped a collision on the way through. So she's called the foul. Yeah, she definitely got collided. It was either Mihach or Preston there. And they've both signaled that it's uncontested. They're not going to argue at all. It was definitely contact made there. So Preston did get a hand to it before. It made it to Stoddard, but the collision was definitely the foul. So Stoddard will keep the disc from the goal line to keep the game going. Puts the wide back end out. It's out of the fingertips of Morris Jackson and into the hands of Mihach. Mihach winds up, sends the line back end, looking for Kite Beatty. But it's fallen short. And Kite Beatty, it's, she anticipated the... The ricochet. And it's hit the ground there. I think that's um, that's Ewan who's gone down. Just an awkward landing there. Yeah. So they're bounced off a few bodies there, and yeah, I think she's probably helping to, having to get helped off there. It's very unfortunate for her. And that's going to be a blow to Sugar Max, not only for this game, but for the rest of the tournament. Yeah. Hopefully not a long-lasting injury, maybe just a jar, but we'll see. She's played a fantastic game. She has. Uh, she'll be sorely missed. Uh, King coming in as her substitute. <laughs> nice little back end on the visor there, but <laughs> very different throwing from throwing a piece of plastic. Yes. So they're going to agree that, yeah, there's no no calls. The turnover will stand, and so it'll be Sugar Magnolia's disc. They've got about pretty much right on halfway, so just under 30 metres to advance to goal. And Cass Matheson with the run-through block. Beautiful heads-up defence there from Matheson. And Smith is looking to reset to King there, so Mayhatch will pick this up. She's got Matheson charging towards her. Throws too wide, it's floating up, few numbers at it. So King's going to pick up for Sugar Magnolias. Immediately looks to the middle for Smith, but she can't quite get free. Finally finds some space. Goes wide to Stoddard, but I think with two players going for it, wasn't going to be clear who was going to have the clean look at it, so Preston will pick up. Heads the line up to Mihach, and it's gone over the top of her. It's Coming one of those games, Laura. It is, but <laughs> Chile is slowly gaining, having to work a little less yep. of distance down the field every time. Yeah. Victory is right, right in their eyesight at the moment. And you can't, can't avoid the thinking on the field that just this one throw could do it. We could win it right here. But you've just got to have the discipline to stick to your structure, stick to your game plan and work it as you normally have. It's got your 14 goals so far. It'll get you your 15th. And Preston having to send that lateral up. It was her last option. Puts it too wide. 
Smith. Everyone cutting away from her, no one cutting towards her. She, so she just has to float it up. And Kat bucks her. And Chili here choosing to walk through. Yep. Me Hatch picking up the disc. Really wants that high side. Tries to find bucks a bit out of reach. This has been a long point, hotly contested. Neither team wants to let go. King pumps the forehand up, looking for Stoddard, and Preston throws the Dukes up <laughs> and it clips her arm enough to get the <laughs> enough to get the block. That's all you need sometimes. Put your hands up, hope for the best, and it's done well. She gets the forward reset, moves to Buxer. Buxer's got Kai Beatty. She sends it long, but straight into the arms of the defender there. Sarah Lang, as we hear the siren go for time caps, of course, our game clock's not official. Well, there we go. Almost bang on. <laughs> You've done well today. So this, Stoddard pumps it along for Morris Jackson, who has to dive but can't reel it in. So, of course, the rule here is that once this goal is scored, then one is added to the highest score to win. Unless, of course, Spicy Chili score this one. So that'll be their 15th goal. That'll be game over. Preston. Long, wide forehand looking for Buxer, and it came in came in hot. I think Buxer thought this is going to be a nice, steady one, but picked up some speed at the end there. It did. Curved away from her uh, as Sugar Magnolia's King moving to the disc to pick it up. Great lateral shot to Sarah Lang there, but a pick was called. By the cutter there and just discussing whether it affected that throw or not. Of course, for a pick to be valid, you have to actually be closely following the cutter. You can't just claim that that was someone you were defending if they're 10 metres away. They've agreed that it's going to stay with Smith and Smith Pumps it up, and it's a rare error from her. Sends it too high and wide, and that's drifted out of bounds. It has. So Spicy Chili, another chance here. Uh, Sugar Magnolia is sticking to a person-to-person -person defense. Uh, talking to Stoddard before the game, she said that the Sugar Magnolias really love a bit of breathing down their neck defense. Uh, high pressure, high intensity. So that's what they'll be looking to do here. Press is going to have to go up the line. She was left a bit of banter there. Matheson's cleaned that up, throwing herself underneath it and throws forward to Koshia, but Buxer cleans up. Very frantic defense now. Van. Matheson. 10 minutes to go. Big white back end up looking for Kite Beatty. A little bit too high, a little bit too long. Too uh, wide. It was out of bounds. Uh, swirling in that back corner that we've yeah. been talking about all game. Sugar Magnolias will have to dig deep, uh, practice all of their resilience here mm. uh, to keep their heads up, to keep the energy up, to keep focused. And if there's one player you want to have the disc right now to get you out of that corner, it is Leanne King. Really playing to the letter of the law and the rules here and where her pivot foot is set. Yes, so the pivot foot must be set on that front cone of the end zone. Daniel, what have you got? Quick. I just had a quick chat with Jasper Penlin, coach of Chile. I asked him about this game. I said, you're not able to close the door. He said, at the moment, it's just that mind-body connection and a little bit of day two uh, fatigue getting in their uh, heads at the moment. Retzlaff unable to collect that one. So Mihach directing traffic as she moves towards the disc. They've isolated Cat Buxer in the end zone, even though they're still about 15 away. Puts a great inside shot up, but... Was looking to hit her directly, but drifted up over the top. It did. The defender there doing a really good job of uh, distracting Buxer. As the clock keeps ticking. The clock's now irrelevant. It's game to 15. That's it. The there score is cap's not going to change. 
Yep, there is no hard time cap here at Ultimate Championships. Uh, we play until the winning point is scored. Yep. King. Great layout there. Picks it up immediately to Lang. Back to King. King winds up the backhand looking for Stoddard. Stoddard versus Matheson. Stoddard's drifting away. It's gone away and there was a yep, clash of legs there. So Stoddard's called the foul. Matheson's agreed straight away. So that's going to be Jess Stoddard. Uh, sorry, Anna Stoddard's disc. Right on the goal line. Right on the goal line. This is what Sugar Magnolias have been looking for. Uh, now the goal will be to keep their composure, uh, not to try and rush it in. Uh, there's a lot of like end zone fever that can go around in situations like this. So the players are just unsure of the outcome here. We're going to head down to the game advisors, see if we can listen in. Um, but I don't think you would have gotten there. Okay, so you're contesting the outcome rather than contesting the foul. It's still yeah. treated as a contested foul, yep. so we'll go back. Cool. Okay, yep. <laughs> So Matheson agrees that it was a foul, but doesn't think that Stoddard would have been able to make a play on the disc regardless of the foul. So on that basis, it's contested. So it's going to come back to Leanne King. Of course, Steve Baker and Holly Halford Smith, our game advisors, guiding the players through the discussion process and advising them of the correct rules to make, but it's still there, the player's decision. Yeah, they're there to give guidance. They've yeah. got a lot of experience uh, and they're kind of an impartial party who can help bring balance to the discussion. Yeah. So King, about 40 from goal. Has eyes for one cutter only. And Retzlaff gets blocked there by Koshia. So Mihatch looking upfield. She's got a cutter going deep. That's Kat Buxer. It looks lateral instead. Finds Christina Van. Center field. Keeps going to Matheson. Matheson winds up. Sends the big forehand out looking for Kite Beatty. Drifting, drifting, drifting. And it's gone to ground. Two Chile players underneath that one. Buxner coming in to try and clean up the scraps, but unable to get the hand on it. And not for the first time. It's gone to ground in Chile's end zone. Smith to restart play. 64 from goal. To keep this game alive, keep their chances going. Doolan. Smith. Stoddard. Got a long option on. Holsters the throw. Not much happening towards it now. Finds King, center field. Morris Jackson. And King pumps it up the line, but straight to the hands of Kite Beatty. So we've got the young Cat Bucks are playing on Leanne King. I think Chile need to change that matchup. I understand the reasoning for it. Buxner being one of their long options, uh, giving her, uh, it means she has less distance to run on a turnover, marking a handler. I think that's the reasoning there. And also Buxner's young legs against King's uh, more seasoned ones means Buxner might be able to get free more easily for Chile. Yeah, but King just playing too smartly and it's providing them just too many easy resets. So a timeout's been called by Chile. Well within their right to call a timeout. Obviously, at some championships, calling a timeout after time cap is not allowed, but of course, being the national championships and play the best. So that would have been a directive by Jasper Pentland on the sideline saying, can you please call this one just so I can bring you in, have a chat, and just reset you mentally. Meanwhile, the Sugar Magnolias, they're just going to keep fighting. They are. They don't want to give this up without a fight. Uh, they showed yesterday in the game against Phoenix that they wouldn't go down easily, and they're proving this again to Spicy Chili today. Yeah. So looking here, it'll be interesting to see whether Chili come out of this with a set play. Uh, with a kind of power play option in place, uh, targeted players, targeted structures, or whether this is just a call to settle down, to bring their heads in, to remind them of what they've been drilled. 
Um, and same with Sugar Magnolias, whether they'll try and set any defensive structures or whether they'll just take a breather. You'd imagine that Chile will try and sort of link up three or four quick succession passes. I reckon they'll try and move it laterally to this, this near side, the camera side of the field first. With a long shot looking for probably Buxer or Kite Beardy. And we can see that there with Preston picking up the disc. Me Hatch central in the field. Uh, it definitely looks like that prediction is going to come true, Simon. Yeah. And they've shifted that formation diagonally, which gives them space to work those up the line throws as well. Pulls the defenders out of that space. Preston immediately looking for Mehatch, but they may have unable to get free. Preston's just going to have to unleash this. Sends it up. Mehatch is underneath it. She's it's been knocked away, but not way forward by Jessica Morris Jackson, almost into the hands of Kite Beatty. Not the outcome she would have wanted from that block, but the block nonetheless. Uh, Sugar Magnolias do get possession of the disc, but they are going to be taking it almost from the other end zone line. Daniel Clinton, what have you seen? A uh, quick update on Daisy Ewan. She seems to be up and about walking around okay on that ankle. Great news. It's good to hear. Smith pumps the backhand up. But again, she's just leaned a bit too far back on that one. And second time again, we've seen that usually reliable, consistent backhand throw. Drift out of bounds. Spicy with another chance here. This time, Me Hatch picking up the disc and Preston in the middle. Great gainer. Wide to Matheson. Matheson's got a free shot at the end zone. Goes short to Buxer, who's got time to run it in. <laughs> Has to take three goes at it. And she's found Matheson. And they've won the game. They've finally put it away. Spicy Chili get their second win of the tournament. How great is that? Buxner to Matheson to close it out. Buxner getting the grab eventually. Uh, Matheson streaming deep for her. What a terrific game. We were worried about this one would go the distance, but it's been one of the longest games we've seen this weekend. We're going to head down to Daniel Clinton, who's there with Louisa Batista. Yeah, I've managed to wrangle Louis here. Louis, great game. Well played. Another victory for you guys. Yeah, I mean, this is the second victory, but yeah, no, we're absolutely stoked to have this one on the board. So you played really well, but you were unable to really close the door on the Sugar Mags. They just kept coming. They just kept coming. It was far too close for comfort, I think. I think we felt kind of confident the entire way, but Sugar Mags definitely didn't let up. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'll let you get back to your team. Good luck for the tournament. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys. <laughs> back to you, Simon. Uh, thank you very much to Daniel there and Louisa. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with the next game very, very shortly at 11 o'clock. So in about eight minutes' time, we'll have Sunder Slice versus Melbourne Juggernaut.